20, uh, 7.23 p.m. because some of us had a little trouble logging in. I am Donna Doucette and I will be presiding over the hearing this evening. Assisting me are board members Sandra Kasabian Hoffman and John Labadini. Assisting us are Attorney David Dineski and Licensing Board Clerk Julie Casello. And I believe we also have Watertown Police Sergeant Tom Grady with us this evening. Is that correct? Per the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law to avoid group congregations, this meeting is being held via remote online technology. As posted by the town on the agenda publicized for this meeting, there are four ways to participate. By observing via cable TV, by joining this meeting online or by telephone, and prior to this hearing, by sending a written comment to be read at the appropriate time during the hearing. Please note that as with in-person meetings, public comments and applicant presentations are limited to specified times during the hearing. At those times, in order to comment, click the raise your hand icon next to your name under the participants list or wave your hand at the monitor and our meeting monitor will unmute each person in order as they are called upon by Ms. Julie Casello. First item on the agenda this evening is the approval of the October minutes. Uh, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, Mr. Labadini, do you have any additions or corrections to be made to the minutes that you received beforehand? I wasn't at the majority of the meeting, so. That's true, you were not. Thank you, Sandra. For the part that you were there, did you see anything you wanted to question no. or change? Thank no. you. Mr. Labadini? No, no changes for me. Okay, the minutes are approved as written. Next, we are dealing with the special licenses. The first is a request from the Arsenal Yards, 130 Arsenal Yards Boulevard for one day entertainment licenses, Monday through Sunday, November 23rd to December 24th. And I will ask, um, let's see, who's here representing them? Jessica. Hello. Okay, Jessica is unmuted. Jessica, please describe to us the uh, plans, what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Um, hi, my name is Jessica Reed. I'm the uh, marketing director for Arsenal Yards. Um, I prepared a brief um, presentation, if it's okay to um, share my screen. Is that okay? Yes, it is okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, um, so before I go into the specific program, um, I just wanted to mention that we've learned a lot over the last few months um, programming in um, the pandemic, and we've been really pleased with the community response um, in following the rules and regulations that we've needed to put in place uh, to be able to have these programs. Um, so with that, our goal continues to be to support our restaurants and retailers, but also to um, continue to create a, an experience that is both safe and welcoming for our community. Uh, so with that, um, in order to support our restaurants and retailers and to create that um, experience for a community that is safe and welcoming and inviting, um, we would like to apply for an entertainment license uh, for music and entertainment that would coincide with our outdoor propane fire pit series. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that the safety of our community staff and our vendors uh, remains our top priority, and we will continue to monitor the COVID-19 pandemic to ensure that the experience uh, remains safe and we're following all the rules and guidelines that are set forth by the town and state. I will go into those um, guidelines in, in just a minute in this presentation as well. 
So uh, to go over the program as a whole, the um, area that we will be using is um, outside Shake Shack. Uh, it's what we call the River Green. Uh, so we have uh, recently been approved for uh, the use of outdoor propane fire pits uh, by the Watertown Fire Department. We have the permit for the fire pits and the um, propane storage on site. Uh, with that, we would have uh, six outdoor fire pits. Um, they're um, outlined as noted by the, the red circles. Uh, they will be a minimum of 10 feet away from the building as well as any other uh, fire pit, any other of the six. Um, each fire pit will, will sit um, fit a maximum of six people. Uh, the fire pits will be reservation only um, and people will only be seated with their reservation party. Uh, we will have a small reservation fee um, to secure the uh, propane fire pits that will go towards the Watertown Boys and Girls Club um, and the Watertown Food Pantry. So um, in total, our event capacity is 36 plus staff and entertainment. Um, so in total, we will not exceed 50 people um, at any point within the, um, the, the event. And um, the event will be monitored and staffed at all times, um, ensuring that we do not hit that capacity and monitoring people who are going in and going out. Uh, the uh, staff member will also make sure that all COVID-19 re um, requirements are uh, followed. Um, that includes um, ensuring groups are staying socially distant of other groups um, outside of the reservation party. Um, masks are required. Uh, the only exception is if you are seated at your social distant um, fire pit location and eating. That would be the only exception. Other than that, masks are required. Uh, we will have on-site signage uh, mentioning all of these rules and regulations. We will also have hand sanitizer um, available and all uh, fire pit areas will be sanitized in between uh, each use of the reservation. Uh, Jessica, uh, uh, your, your, you mentioned food and drink. Um, is this from the restaurants there or? Uh, correct. So we will be um, takeout from Arsenal Yards restaurants is allowed. So if someone brings in takeout from a restaurant, they are allowed to bring it in. Um, however, they can only eat it while they are seated at their fire pit reserved location. So you're not actually selling the food? No. You're, okay. Correct. Thank you. So in terms of the um, entertainment schedule, um, with the application, um, it did have dates through the end of December. Um, how, however, we're hoping that this can be more than just a holiday season uh, program. Um, we want to be able to uh, provide this community um, program as well as support our restaurants um, through the winter months. We know there's um, some, some tough winter months ahead of us. So if possible, we'd love to be able to offer this program through the beginning of March. Um, I know the application just says through the end of December, but if possible, we'd love to um, be able to extend um, those application dates through the beginning of um, March. So in terms of the time of this program, Mondays through Saturdays would be between 3 and 8.30 p.m. Sundays would be between 11.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, all of these fall within the, uh, the rules right now about um, uh, new closure rules. So we are we're not gonna exceed 8.30 p.m. In terms of the entertainment schedule, Mondays through Wednesdays would be private groups with a DJ or social distant trivia. Thursdays would be a live DJ. Fridays and Saturdays would be a local music act. And Sundays would be more family friendly, um, music focused acts. So are you renting out to private groups? Is that Mondays through Wednesdays? So um, we, we want to use it for, uh, for example, um, our lab, uh, tenants who are on the second floor being able to offer this space for them to um, use it outdoor socially distant um, so it would be for private uh, small groups it wouldn't be every single day just uh, kind of one-off groups mondays through wednesdays otherwise you wouldn't be having anything correct yes. okay thank you and then um, lastly i just put the guidelines for the outdoor um, event 
uh, here. The one thing that I did want to mention is while Watertown is currently in step two of phase three, we are going to be following step one as um, an added uh, safety for our community. Um, those are the, the regulations that we, we are going to follow. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any additional questions or go over anything in, in further detail. Uh, Mr. Labadini, do you have any questions for Ms. Reed? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Uh, no, no questions for me. Thank you. Ms. Kasabian-Hoffman, do you have any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. You said mm -hmm. that, um, Ms. Reed, you said that people make reservations for the fire pits. So how long, how long the amount of time is one reservation? Like how many different groups would you be seating within the hours that you're uh, offering this? Mm -hmm. So uh, two, two sessions per day. Uh, the sessions would be an hour and a half long and we'd have um, at least a half an hour mm -hmm. in between each session in order to sanitize and, and clean, clean um, and have everyone come out before the next group comes in. And one more question. Um, you did mention that you, this is a way to help promote the restaurants in, in their business as well, but what if somebody brings their own food into the area when they've made a reservation? Is that going to be allowed or? Uh, it's definitely not encouraged um, if it happens to be a um, a vitamin water or a kid's snack or something that's not um, a huge deal, we might let it slide. But if it's if it's an outside um, an outside restaurant that they're bringing in, that really will, won't be allowed. Yeah, because the point is to um, encourage business mm -hmm. in the winter months. And yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So no, nobody shows up with a picnic basket. And Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. There'd be no deliveries yes. from Grubhub to the to the area from other places. Yes. Oh, I have a, an additional question. Mm -hmm. Would this? I know that the um, that the guidelines for alcohol service outside uh, were um, extended outside of restaurants in the winter, but this won't. This area there won't be alcohol allowed in this area. Is that correct? Or, uh, for, for this, there's not alcohol permitted for people bringing in um, alcohol from, from a restaurant. Um, for these private groups, if this private group wants to apply for uh, a liquor license, they would go through the, the appropriate process in order to um, get an ABCC caterer. But for this program, we're not applying for a uh, liquor license in the area. Thank you. Um, this is a, a technical issue for Mr. Dineski. Um, these are one day entertainment licenses. So what is the function? How would, how would this be handled? Are we providing single entertainment licenses, multiple ones on each of these days? Or do we issue a blanket one? I'm not quite sure of the mechanism here that, that we should be employing. Madam Chair, I, I think you may issue, uh, to use your words, a blanket approval with the specified days because where there's no alcohol service, there's not any particular limitation. And specifying where there would be so many days, uh, all of them in one place might be cleaner and neater for everyone's record keeping. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and this is a, a mechanism question for you, Ms. Reed. Um, how would I find out about this event? Is this advertised? Is this, um, or do I just have to wander around the mall someday and see a sign that says that I can participate in this if I make a reservation? Uh, so the majority of the promotion will be done on, all online on our website events calendar and through our uh, social media platforms. That will be the predominant way. Uh, we are hoping that the reservations are completed very well in advance um, versus coming up on, on site. So all of it will be done promoted digitally in advance. Okay. And the final question, you mentioned that staff will be there at all times. Mm -hmm. um, how many are we talking about? 
So we will have one designated staff member to that area every time there's a session. However, we also have security that is on site 24 seven as well. Um, but one person will be designated at all times into that area. And do you think that's sufficient to cover I, I do. Um, as someone who's staffed the previous um, events, one, one person definitely can do it with the support of security. If anything happens, they're right there to help. However, one person um, can definitely staff that area with 36 event guests. It's, it's definitely um, one person can handle it. Okay. Um, and uh, have you forwarded a copy of this slideshow to our clerk so that it can become part of the public record? I have not, but I absolutely can. Please do so. Yeah. Um, the building department has no comment, the fire department no comment, although we know from Ms. Reed that there, um, that this operation has received the appropriate fire department permits. Uh, Health Department notes that the Arsenal Yards events must comply with COVID-19 outdoor event guidance and must develop a plan to measure attendee capacity in keeping with the guidance as well as monitoring the same. Zoning has no comment. And uh, Sergeant Grady, would you like to read the Police Department recommendation? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Um, just for the record, we're not prepared to comment on the change in the calendar that they've offered in this presentation or the time changes that they've uh, now requested uh, in this presentation. We, we received the application with uh, the information that we reviewed and approved. So uh, subject to your approval, this department has no objection to the applicant's request for an entertainment license for holiday music to be held daily Monday through Sunday beginning no on November 23rd, 2020 through December 24th, 2020 uh, from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. Uh, selected times, provided the following restrictions are adhered to. The activity shall be restricted to the property of the Arsenal Yards. Adequate adult su supervision shall be maintained at all times. All patrons shall not create unreasonable conduct and or excessive noise. Any music shall be kept at a reasonable and unobtrusive level at all times. No alcoholic beverages shall be sold and or consumed on the property during this event, and the hours for the outdoor festivities are restricted to 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. Okay. Um, Sergeant Grady, would this, would item number five, no alcoholic beverages, um, you would presume that that would be superseded by, let's say, some private group coming and requesting a special one-day license, and we would deal with it separately? Is that correct? Uh, if they were to use a caterer's license, obviously they would have to utilize the, uh, the caterer's procedures as far as the notification to the chief of police. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, you know, obviously though, I would believe the licensing board would have to be aware of the fact that, right. uh, you know, that was taking place. So your, your provision is for the normal operation and private groups by definition would be outside this particular recommendation and would have to adhere to a separate recommendation either from us or from the police department in response to the caterer's license. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, it just, the, the alcohol portion and the caterer's idea was never mentioned as part of this uh, package. So mm -hmm. it kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Okay. Um, I think given that the original request covered only through December 24. Um, I will, this is not an, a publicly advertised, so we're not actually in violation of any public advertisement, are we, Mr. Domeski? Madam Chair, with no ad, there wouldn't be any conflict with what would have been published. Right. Uh, maybe anticipating your concern, one option would be to approve this evening the hours as requested, since those were what were reviewed by the police department, and then placing another item on the agenda for December to consider extension of the period beyond that December 24 date. 
I think I thank you. I think I would be more comfortable with that sort of arrangement. Um, so let me propose that since I'm the one who raised the issue, I recommend that we approve one day entertainment licenses for the period of Monday through Sunday, November 23rd through December 24th on the dates and utilizing the specifications that were presented to us this evening via the presentation that uh, Jessica Reed provided to us for this operation. Uh, did I say November 23rd through December 24th? Yes. Okay. And so that's my proposal. And then uh, Mr. Labadini and Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, should you agree, then we could uh, have another brief item on the agenda in December if the Arsenal Yards wishes to continue the operation beyond Christmas Eve. So, uh, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, do you agree with this proposal? Yes, yes, and I would add it subject to the recommendations of the Health and Police Department. Thank you, yes. Mr. Labadini? Uh, yes, I agree, and uh, uh, pretty much what Sandra said as well as um, okay. the other departments. Okay, the only thing left, Ms. Reed, is for you to pick up the permits and provide that uh, a presentation to Julie Casello so that we will have it as a part of the public record. Thank okay, you. Great. Thank you. Next item is Bottleneck Watertown LLC doing business at City Works Eatery and Poor, ha Poor House, 91 Arsenal Yards Boulevard. This is a request for extended hours um, for their all alcohol license on New Year's Eve, December 31st. Um, do we have a representative from Bottleneck Watertown? Yes. Your name is? Tim Benedict. Tim Benedict, there we are. Mr. Benedict, um, this is fairly straightforward, but describe yep. the, the request, please. We're just looking to extend our hours to be able to go past you know, ball drop and, and, and do that, that whole spiel. Uh, nothing in our actual service would change. It would be standard service just until 2 a.m. Okay. Um, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, do you have any questions for the applicant? Uh, yes, actually. Um, well, the extended hours go beyond what the governor has suggested that places be open, right? Oh, that's right. Thank you. That's okay. My, that's my concern. So I don't know how do we work around that or do, do we? Well, work? I don't think we can. I don't think we can. <laughs> Madam Chair, if I may, yes. the board could approve this as it has done with other similar requests in years past, but condition it on compliance with the governor's order, meaning that if the governor's order remains in place up until Correct. this date, that will be the governing uh, authority for the hours. Thank you, Mr. Dineski. Mr. Labadini, do you have questions for the applicant? No, um, I'm, I'm in favor. Of, I think I heard this. So this is contingent on the governor saying it okay, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's fine. Okay. Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, would you like to make a, a recommendation, please? Sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Um, building department and fire department and zoning department have no comment. The health department notes that the COVID guidelines and occupant, occupancy limits that will be in place by the state at that time must be followed. Sergeant Grady, the police department recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, subject to your approval, this department has no objection to the applicant's request for the extension of hours on New Year's Eve, uh, December 31st, 2020, provided the following restrictions are adhered to. 
the bar shall close at 1 a.m. All activity shall cease no later than 2 a.m. All patrons shall vacate the premises no later than 2.30 a.m. And that was with the compliance with the ABCC advisory as of October 13th, 2020 regarding indoor table and bar services. Thank you. Now, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman. I'll make a recommendation to approve the um, request for extended hours for December 31st, 2020 for the one day all alcohol license for New Year's Eve at Bottleneck Watertown LLC doing business at City Works Eatery and Poor House 91 Arsenal Yards Boulevard, subject to the recommendations of the Health Department and the Police Department, and whatever the governor says. Okay. Mr. Labadini. Uh, what Sandra just said, can I save some, some time and words here? Um, I'm, I'm in favor as well. Yes. With everything in this police report and all. And I also agree. Um, so conditional approval has been given. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have, again, Bottleneck Watertown LLC doing business as City Works Eatery and Poor House, 91 Arsenal Yards Boulevard. This is a request for a change of hours. Ms. Uh, Casello, do we have an ad to read for this? Yes. So the first, the first ad was wrong. So I sent you all a new ad. Mm -hmm. um, notice is hereby given under chapter 138 and 140 of the general laws are amended that Bottleneck Watertown LLC doing business as City Works Eatery in Poor House is applying for a change of hours at the premises located at 91 Arsenal Yards Boulevard, Watertown, Mass. Description of premises, full service restaurant, dining area, lounge with bar and full service kitchen, patio, dining area, front entrance for public, rear entrance for employees, delivery and emergency use. Restrooms including ha handicap facility, seats 202 interior and 80, 80 patio seats. The hours were Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., food and alcohol. Sunday, 11 a.m. until 12 a.m. The change is to Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. And Sundays, 10.30 a.m. to 12 midnight. Hearing on this application will be held on Thursday, November 19th, 2020 at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom. So we have extended hours requested and they of course will run into various COVID restrictions. Um, so any actions we take um, will be provisional and they will be superseded by um, whatever restrictions are imposed by the state Understood. or by the town of Watertown. Um, but we will consider the extensions, assuming that ultimately we return to ordinary operations. Um, so do we have Mr. Benedict speaking again on this issue? Yeah. Mr. Benedict, um, it's not a huge increase. What's, what's the reason We're, for this? Our, our goal is to add a, uh, a brunch hours on Saturday and Sunday. That's the extent of it. Okay. Mr. Labadini, do you have questions for the applicant? No Ms. Kasabian Hoffman? I do not. Are there any questions or comments from the public regarding this application? I'm scrolling through the list of participants. I don't see any indicators. Um, and most of you have your videos blanked, so it's going to be impossible for you to raise your hand <laughs> to speak. So we will, we will deem this no questions or comments from the public. Um, the zoning department and the building de 
department and the fire department have no comment related to this application. The health department has no comments or objections. The police department comment, um, Sergeant Grady. Thank you, Madam Chair. This department has investigated the applicant's request but have no objection to the change of hours as presented. The new hours shall be Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. until 1 a.m., Saturday from 10.30 a.m. until 1 a.m., and Sunday from 10.30 a.m. until 12 midnight. No alcohol shall be served before 12 noon on Sundays. And all stipulations of the previously issued license shall remain the same. Thank you. Mr. Labadini, I'll take a recommendation. I recommend in, in favor of the change. Okay. Ms. Kasabian Hoffman. Um, I agree, subject to the recommendation of the police department for the change of hours at Bottom Lake Water Town. Specifically, that of no alcohol served before noon on Sundays. Yes. And I also agree. Thank you, Mr. Benedict. No, no way to override the uh, alcohol on before noon. On Sundays? Mr. Mr. Dineski. This issue, Madam Chair, has come up before. That is by statute a decision that is with the town council. Okay, so the answer, Mr. Benedict, is no. We can't okay. contravene that. Um, we have to abide by the Commonwealth's rules. Town Council does have some leeway, apparently, to make different rules, but that's not within our purview. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is Pequasset Airy 1928 Fraternal Order of Eagles, 44 to 46 Mount Auburn mm -hmm. Street. This is confirmation of the new officers and directors. It has been continued from October 15, 2020. And Ms. Casello, I apologize. I did not print out the latest letter for this. Could you please read it so that we have it on record? Or am I catching you unawares? <laughs> Julie? What was that? Can you read the letter to Pequasset Erie? My iPad will let me read it. I'm, find it on here. I'm sorry, I did not print it out. And let's see, maybe I can find it quickly. My files. Okay, I found it. Um, notice is hereby given that the Watertown Licensing Board has continued its hearing on the application of Pequasset Erie number 1928 of the Fraternal Order of Eagles, holder of an all alcohol club beverage license exercised at 44 to 46 Mount Auburn Street for an approval of a change of its officers and directors. The application was originally scheduled for hearing on February 20, 2020, and was continued at the request of the licensee to March 19, 2020. On account of the novel cor coronavirus COVID 19, the licensing board net did not meet again until May 21, 2020. At that time, the board acknowledged a request from the applicant's attorney by letter dated May 15, 2020, for a further continuance to the board's July meeting. At the July 16 meeting, the board acknowledged a request from the applicant's attorney by letter dated July 16, 2020, for a further continuance to the board's August meeting. And at the August 20 meeting, the board acknowledged another request from the applicant's attorney by letter dated August 19, 2020, for a continuance to the board's September meeting. A further request for continuance was made by letter from the applicant's attorney dated September 17, 2020, and the matter was continued to October 15, 2020. 
On October 15, attorney Ken Leitner appeared on behalf of the licensee and reported that the Eagles had held their annual meeting in September, but that additional time was needed to get a complete filing package ready for submission to the ABCC and the Massachusetts Secretary, Commonwealth uh, Secretary. He requested a further continuance to the board's November meeting. The continued hearing on this application will be held on November 19, 2020. The meeting will be held remotely via Zoom. It may be accessed, etc. Please note, if the applicant is not ready to proceed with the hearing at the November 19 meeting, the licensing board may elect to take other action, including enforcement action with respect to the license. I note that we have with us this evening, Mr. Leitner. I presume you are here to represent the Pequasset Erie. Yes, Madam Chair, Ken Leitner on behalf of Pequasset Erie and board members. Um, everything you set, set out is quite accurate. They had, <clears throat> excuse me, during COVID at the, in August, they had the change of officers, which was voted on in September. They couldn't have um, and then I came before you in October and asked for a month to put things together. The effort has been disjunctive. Uh, I have received three um, Corey applications. Uh, part of the application was filed with the clerk's office, but not the full application. We're trying to get it together. Uh, they have made the filing with the Secretary of State's office regarding the offices. So the Commonwealth is on notice as to who the offices and directors are. But they have, but we have been unable also to out this juncture with the MDOR to get the certificate of good standing. So there are items which still need to be addressed by the board. Uh, Mr. Eaton is is making great efforts to get it together, but it's I said it's disjunctive and spotty, and I have not been able to meet with him to uh, finalize things. And the board has, and I understand the obligations of the board, and the board has been very fair throughout the process. Um, and, uh, you know, the year is coming up, I fully understand that, but we, they really just need a little bit more time to get it together. I've reached out to Mr. Eaton, and I, I do feel we can get it together, and I'm sorry for being here today to um, take up some of your time. It appears you have a very important meeting, and we'd ask for your support one more time for just another extension to put it together, and then we could properly do the renewal. What are, you, what are you missing, Mr. L You're missing Corey's? You're missing... No, I, I, have, I, have, I have the Corey's presently. They just rounded those up. I have the Corey's. I have to work with Mr. Eaton because it takes a... Uh, to get onto the MDOR website, there are certain things that I can't do. So I have to get onto the MDOR website with him to get the certificate of good standing. Uh, he has put together the application for the ABCC. He's filed it with the ABCC, but we can't come up with a receipt on it, so I have to contact them. And then the last thing is uh, the state forms, which I had earlier filed, but this was back in February. I have to check them now against the uh, change of officers and update them. The state, I'm, I mean, the municipal forms for the town of Watertown. Uh, when you say the quarries, you've collected the quarries. Have they all been submitted? Or no, I've just collected the. I've collected them, and I've I spoke with uh, Sergeant Detective Tom Grady today. I told him that I had them, and he explained to me that did not give him an opportunity to undertake the investigation. Right. Which I fully right. understand. Because so the I, investigation has to proceed, so the quarries correct. are not done. The certificate from the Department of Revenue is not done, and. The the application with the ABCC was filed, but we have to get evidence of that. It was it was worked. Uh, assiduously at this, but what they told you with mixed results. You know, despite COVID, every other social club has managed to meet the requirements here. I, um, as I said last time, the inability of this group of, of uh, folks to assemble and just tell us appropriately who the officers and directors are does not speak well for their administration of liquor license. Um, I'm in agreement. It's a really basic 
requirement. All you have to do is tell the state each year who's in charge. <laughs> I am in agreement, and it's, um, it's to, the board has been very fair to us. But I think it's a it's a very worthwhile club that uh, has been there for the residents of Watertown and for its members for a number of years, and you, they're going through a period of change. And um, I think that we can hold things together and keep it viable. And, and you know, I of course it's not pleasant to come back to the board and and ask for uh, more time. But if I didn't think it was worthwhile, I, I certainly would not have done it. And in the past, uh, um, post 1105, you might remember I helped them and we finally put things together. Then they sold the building. But, uh, you know, we I want to keep at it and get to the result that the town needs. But I do understand uh, the courtesy you've extended us to date. Ms. Kasabian Hoffman. Um. Do you want me to make a comment about whether or not we should extend it to December? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would make that recommendation. Mr. Labadini. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I want to make a recommendation with comments. It's just, um, you know, you enjoy a, a, a rep, you know, a reputable attorney and everything else. And, uh, uh, whatever you can do to make this a priority and anything that's in your control, try and uh, uh, make that a priority. And I certainly empathize with uh, being dependent on another agency and that's out of your control. So uh, I'm, I'm in favor of the extension. Just, um, um, but I, you know, my colleagues have commented on about um, other people having their house in order. So uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna see those go anywhere any more than anyone else does. Um, I will, with my two colleagues, continue this hearing to, what's the date in December, Julie? 17th? Yes, December 17th. We will continue it to December 17th. Thank you. You know, the problem at that point, Mr. Leitner, is going to be that come February or March, I forget what the date is, you've got to file another set of forms. Correct. You, so, you are you're in a position just to re uh, take the information from the existing forms and move it along in a professional, expeditious manner. Okay. One more chance. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Next item on the agenda is Sane Karras the Hermit doing business as the Spot Cafe, 385 Main Street. This is a request for a new common victualler license. Um, do we have a representative from Sane Karras here? Uh, yes, ma'am, we are here. Uh, this is my dad, uh, Yusuf Mikhail, and I'm here. My name is Mina. I'm going to be translating just like a little bit fine. Okay. Uh, Ms. Casella, would you please read the ad pertaining to this application? Notice is hereby given under Chapter 140 of the General Laws as amended that St. Carras, the Hermit, Incorporated, doing business as the Spot Cafe, is applying for a common victual license to be located at 385 Main Street, Watertown, Mass. Description of premise, a restaurant with 900 square feet, two bathrooms, a dining area with 20 chairs, a fully equipped kitchen with stove, grill, and refrigerator, a basement used for storage that includes a walk-in freezer. Hours of operation Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Hearing on this application will be held on Thursday, November 19th, 2020 at 7.15 via Zoom. Thank you. Do we have the abutter notifications? We do. We have all four out of four. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. McHale, you can go ahead and tell us about the operation and the experiences of your father and whoever else will be uh, working there. I believe the manager is different from your father. Is that correct? So the manager is going to be my mom. And the people that are working there is uh, me, my father, and uh, my other brother. 
um, so it's family run. Um, so we're just gonna still keep it the same. It's still gonna be um, a breakfast brunch place, same menu. We're not planning on changing anything in the store. Um, I only had one request and that request was um, if we get approved that we um, like we move into like uh, the store by ourselves um, without the old owner being there due to them being like having health issues and them being old, they can't run the store anymore. So if the board, the board approves it, um, we would like to like have full ownership of the store if we get approved by tomorrow, please. Um, it's my understanding from reading the uh, items that you submitted and looking at the agreement you have with the previous owners that you have in fact been operating the store under their name for several months. Is that correct? Oh, so we have been um, helping the old owner with the store for the past month. We have been uh, working with him. And also, my brother has the same store. So also my dad has been working, helping his brother for several years. Mm -hmm. And his brother has, he has a, um, a store in Plainville. And even D and D breakfast. I have experience for my brother. Maybe uh, six months. I work on my brother. I work in uh, an old uh, owner, Marco, and one month in Suzanne. And uh, I have experience. I work on my sister, eighty years, in uh, lunch and dinner in Eden. Pizza, uh, pizza. I have experience too much. <laughs> with Very good. Food. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, are there any questions or comments from the public regarding this application? I see none. Um, Mr. Labadini, do you have any questions for the Mikhail's? concerning this request for a new common victualler license? Um, so just in layman's terms, if I had been going in there twice a week for the last month, and now I start going in there twice a week for the next month, the difference is basically operationally going to be the name on the victualler's license for all intents and purposes? Yep. Everything is going to stay the same. The same. Wonderful. Okay. No, I have uh, no questions. Ms. Kasabian Hoffman. I have no questions. Okay. The zoning department has no comment. Building department has no comment. Fire department, no comment. Health department. The spot cafe applicant has to be granted a food service permit prior to opening. The applicant has submitted applications to the health department. Sergeant Grady, the police department recommendation. You're on mute, Tommy. Tom. Sorry about that. I got it. There, there you go. <laughs> so, this, this department has investigated the applicant's request, would have no objection to the issuance of the license, provided the following is stipulated on the license. Description of the premises is as follows estimated 900 square feet with two bathrooms. Kitchen dining area with one entrance, one exit, and a basement for storage. Seating capacity shall be 20. The office of operation shall be uh, Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. until 11 p.m. There should be no alcoholic beverages on the premises. Thank you. Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, I'll take a recommendation. I'll make a recommendation to approve the new common victual license to St. Caris the Hermit doing business as the Spot Cafe, 385 Main Street, subject to the recommendations of the health and police departments. Thank you. Mr. Labadini. Um, I concur. I also agree. Um, Mr. McHale, um, technically we can't hand you a piece of paper that says um, you're operating tomorrow and given that you must get the names changed and certified on the health department application, we would certainly not do that. 
However, given that you've been in there operating, um, the conditions will just stay as they are, but it is, you're approved, it's your common victualler now, and it's just a matter of waiting until you get the letter from the attorney, and then you go down and pick up the license to post in the, in the, the restaurant, okay? Thank you. Mr. Dineski, I have described the situation accurately. Unmute, David. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have the Watertown Restaurant Corporation doing business as Porcini's, 68 School Street. This is a request for a change of manager. Ms. Casello, do we have an ad for that? No, you don't no, need that. We don't, that's just a, 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 yeah, that's what I think. Um, who do we have here from the, um, from Porcini's? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Joseph Beal. I am the general manager of Porcini's uh, 68 School Street in Watertown. Okay. And you want to talk to us about the manager and the changeover, tell us the experience of the manager, et cetera? Um, the, um, I have over 26 years experience in the food and beverage industry, um, 10, of year, 10 of which years in a managerial role. Um, and most of my experience is on the beverage side of the industry. Okay. Um, I also have taken numerous classes in uh, UMass Boston, um, alcohol related, um, that was incorporated in my degree in criminal justice. Um, I noticed on your application, however, that uh, to the question of whether you were certified uh, for service, you checked both yes and no. What's the story there? Um, so we have a, a, a office outside of Portini's that owns, um, Belmont Capital owns Portini's, so actually our accountant filled out all the paperwork. And um, I, she was talking to me while she was filling out the, the um, paperwork, asking me the questions, so I, maybe that's a clerical error. Okay. Do you have TIPS certification? Or is I, your... Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. Um, Mr. Labadini, do you have questions for this applicant? No questions for me. Ms. Kasabian Hoffman? I have no questions. Thank you. The building, oh wait, where, here we go. Building, fire, health department, and zoning have no comment. Sergeant Grady, the police department recommendation, please. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. This department has investigated the applicant's request with no objection to the change of manager as presented. The new manager of record, Joseph Beal, shall ensure that all employees engaged in the sale and service of alcoholic beverages attend and successfully complete an alcohol awareness training program, i.e. TIPS, immediately upon hire or expiration of certification. All other stipulations of the previously issued license shall remain the same. Thank you. Um, Mr. Beal, are you, have you checked on the TIPS certification for people employed? Yes, ma'am, I have. Um, all of my uh, servers, front of the house servers are TIP certified except for two, which I have um, instructed that they will not be able to um, participate in their next, sh next shift until they are TIP certified. Okay, thank you. Um, whose turn? Mr. Labadini or Ms. Kasabian Hoff? Mr. Labadini, I'll take a recommendation. Uh, I recommend um, we move forward and approve the change in manager. Uh, based on everything we've heard in the police report I have in front of me and, and, and all those stipulations. Thank you, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman. I agree. And I also agree. Thank you, Mr. Beal. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, board members. Um, we have now Yogi Resources doing business as Yogi's General Market, 218 Waverly Avenue. This is also a change of manager. Um, Mr. Dineski, I would like to ask you, are you, how much more time do you have before you have to go to the other meeting? Thank you very much. It should be at least 15 minutes, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, well, let's see if we can get through this one quickly. Yogi Resources, who do we have here from Yogi? Yeah, I'm the owner of the store, Yogi Vyas. 
Okay. And uh, my manager, uh, she is also with me. And her so name is? Her name is Maria. Shahira Pantoya. I'm sorry, what was your name? Jahira Pantoya. Jahira, thank you, that's correct. Um, describe your experience with management. Uh, my experience with management, um, I've worked at another convenience store where they um, sell alcohol as well. Um, my experience is basically just having the best customer service that I could give to the customers um, and basically just maintain and do the right thing for the store or the um, company, corporate, or anything that I would have my manager skills put on. Okay. What are the particular safety protocols that you observe to ensure that only persons of appropriate age um, are able to purchase liquor? Can you repeat that question again? I'm sorry. Can you describe what safety measures or you have in the store that are used to verify that the person buy, attempting to buy liquor is the proper age? So what we do is we, um, we check IDs. Um, we also have the machine to check the IDs to see if they're um, actually like real or not fake. Not, um, um, we also, what we do is, if I see anybody that's that looks very young, I ask for ID. Even if it's somebody older, I ask for ID. If I don't know the customer or if I'm not familiar with the person, okay. we also so program on our on our cashier. Before I am able to sell any alcohol, I have to um, press the button saying that I did verify an ID. Okay, the point of sale. Um verification is only as good as the person asking. I will tell you that we have had an experience in this town where someone consistently made sales to a person they had, they knew someone they thought was above the age at which you can purchase alcohol. This person was not above that age. Um, but they got in the habit because they knew the person of not asking for the identity. Um, so I would recommend to you that you check IDs every time, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there questions or comments from Mr. Labadini or Ms. Kasabian Hoffman? I don't have any questions. I didn't, I'm not clear on the experience that the um, Miss Pan, Pan, how, how do you say your last name? Pantoja. Pantoja. I'm not clear on the experience that she has with, um, uh, that you have Miss Pantoja with, um, the service of alcohol or this, the, the, uh, mm -hmm. of alcohol. I, I worked at the convenience plus on school street in Watertown. And I also, I'm sure I, I did the test, the NIPS test and I'm certified actually, and I did take that test. Okay, thank you. The police department recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. This department has investigated the applicant's request and would request the application should be denied at this time, as the person recommended by the licensee is deemed unsuitable for this position. Thank you, Sergeant Grady. Um, I recommend that we do not approve the change in manager for Yogi's General Market at 218 Waverly Avenue. Um, if the owner um, needs to recommend someone else for the application, they are certainly free to do so at a later time. But my recommendation at this time is to um, follow the police department recommendation and not approve the change of manager. Ms. Madam, Kasabian. my manager wants to tell you something, what she had to narrate something, if you allow. Say again, please. 
can my can my manager explain um yes um i just want um the only i just want to ask um why uh, why is it being denied um i am recommending it has not been denied yet i am recommending mm -hmm that we do deny it on the basis of the police department recommendation. I would suggest that if you wish further to have further in, well, first let's see, uh, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, your. Uh, I would agree with your. Mr. Labadini. Yeah, I would err on the side of the police report and, and deny it this okay. time. Ms. Pantoya, um, your conversation should be held with Sergeant Grady. There are investigations and information that the police are allowed to have access to, which we do not necessarily have access to, and which should not be covered in an open hearing. So I would recommend that you contact Sergeant Grady and um, also tell Yogi Resources in general that you will need to either propose another management, continue managing it yourself, or resolve the matter with Sergeant Grady. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, we now come to license renewal issues for um, 2021. We're all fairly familiar with <laughs> the uh, situation that will be discussed right now. However, um, I would like to provide information for the record um, as before we open this for comment or for proposals. And in doing so, I would ask Mr. Dineski, who has another time commitment, um, if he would please tell us briefly uh, about the uh, comparisons he made or the information he gathered regarding licensing renewal fees in other cities uh, adjacent to and in the Commonwealth. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just to set the table briefly, the uh, issue that has been presented to the licensing board in various communications that have been received and in phone calls made, as was referenced uh, by Ms. Casello at the last meeting, is what would be the amount, if any, of the renewal fee for 2021. My understanding is that primarily the request is for those uh, on-premises alcohol licensees. I did uh, review or have others uh, check on actions in certain other communities. Uh, I think the board also has at least one letter uh, respecting what certain other communities have done. So I'll just briefly give an outline. In uh, Newton and uh, Needham, there has been a 50% uh, reduction authorized in the annual fee. Um, Arlington as well and uh, there have been waivers in, at least as I understand it, Malden and Quincy of the entire fee. Some of the other nearby communities have not, uh, at least to this point, to my knowledge, made any adjustments. Uh, those include Lexington, Belmont, and uh, Burlington. So there's uh, Certainly a fair number of nearby or metro communities that have made adjustments. Some have not or have not yet decided to do so. Okay, thank you. Um, I also provided to the board members and to Attorney Dineski um, a summary of the license fees and what that brings in for the town so that we have, uh, we're not operating blindly. We know exactly what we're doing. Um, the amount that all licenses, um, other than the special entertainment licenses, the ongoing annual licenses, the amount that is brought into the town in terms of revenue is uh, $193,100 per year. 
of that portion, the amounts that are attributed directly to the alcohol service licenses and the in-holder and general on-premise licenses, which also involve service. Um, for the first category, it's a little more than 136,000, and for the second, 25,300. Um, this chart will be included as a part of the public record in the minutes for this hearing so that we do have this uh, basis, uh, this understanding of the impact of on the town of the actions we may take tonight. Um, Ms. Casello, I believe that it is primarily the alcohol-related licenses, the service licenses that come up for renewal on December 31st. Are there other categories that also should be renewed by December 31st or in January or February? Yes. And they are? Auto dealers. Okay. And I don't think you count like the amusement entertainment that kind of goes with the alcohol renewals. Okay. So the auto related licenses, those would be $10,500 total. Um, I should also point out that the renewal fees for the majority of the licenses um, does not exceed $200, $225 for the liquor uh, service licenses, the lowest amount is 850 for the veteran, the, the all the club licenses, the social club licenses. Um, and the highest level are two categories that were created by the special legislation. They are defined by the town council as multiples of the fees that the licensing board sets for other alcohol related fees. So in essence, we would not be addressing those except indirectly because they are defined as multiples of what the base license is uh, for the non-legislated, uh, if you will, uh, licenses available to the town. Now we also, as Mr. Doneski referred to, have received a number of comments prior to the meeting and these this is a way to participate in the public comment portion of the meeting uh, Ms. Casello um, I know that you have received a number of comments by phone or by email and you also have taken steps to address some of the problems that have been described to you so if you would briefly describe to us the number and type of comments you've received and what you have what steps you've taken in response um i received several emails um customers and um town council um i just um told the customers that they could log on to our viewing um to see what the board has decided um I've sent letters, every email or letter that I've received, I told them I would forward to the licensing board to look at all And that. I have two of those that I will read this evening. Um, I, but the, um, you have also, I believe, advised folks about a town grant. Oh, yes. Um, also, I reached out to small businesses. The town was doing a grant to restaurants for five employees or under that they could apply for. Um, you don't pay them back. So I reached out to those restaurants. Then we also had another um, opportunity for the bigger restaurants. And I also gave them the information to reach out for some help also to help pay their okay. fees. And Thank you. Um, we are in receipt of a letter from uh, Tony Palombo, uh, counselor at large, and his uh, 
request to us, I write to express my support for a one-year waiver of license renewal fees for those Watertown establishments that own a liquor license. They have a license. While the fees, $2,700 for the former and $8,100 for the latter, may not be a substantial portion of an owner's overall operating costs, any relief to these businesses would be helpful during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, as we are acutely aware, restaurants and eateries are businesses that have been hit the hardest by restrictions imposed to control the spread of COVID-19. They have seen a decline in customers as many individuals and families refrain from dining out for fear of contracting the virus. This has resulted in a significant loss of revenue, which has also resulted in some owners forced to lay off employees. Federal support via the CARES Act has dried up. And unfortunately, the prospects for federal legislation that would provide support for small businesses is dim. In addition, the drastic increase in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations and the devastating loss of life have led to the renewal of restrictions in Massachusetts that have a direct effect on restaurants and raise the possibility that many may not survive the third wave of the pandemic. I ask you to allow Watertown to join other cities in the Commonwealth who recognize the important economic role restaurants play in adding to the town's coffers and in employing our residents who have chosen to support them by issuing a one-year waiver of license renewal fees. Thank you for your attention to my request. We also have received from Lisa Feltner, Watertown Councilor in District B, Dear Licensing Board, thank you for your consideration of changes to the schedule of fees, and I write in support of waiving standard fees through 2021, in particular for liquor licensing fees. As you are aware, many restaurants, bars, and the hospitality and entertainment industry have already suffered acute losses during this pandemic, and COVID-19 shows no signs of relief. Constituents often share with me their wishes for more restaurants in town, and residents would like to see some relief in support of our local businesses. You are probably aware that other cities and towns are pursuing or have already adopted similar options, including a reduction in permit fees, medical licensing, and more. Although a reduction or waiver of fees will not be enough to ensure survival for many business owners, I appreciate your willingness to be innovative and flexible during these extraordinary times. Thanks again for your consideration. Um, now, if you will um, uh, raise your hands or signal in some way, uh, this is the public, uh, public comment portion, and I see Mr. Sedaris is waving his hand. So if you will unmute yourself, sir, I will recognize you as the first one to speak this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. <clears throat> I'm not gonna repeat what's been said, but we are all, we're all very cognizant of the fact that COVID-19 has decimated many, many industries, and in particular, the restaurant and liquor industry uh, which we have quite a few of them here in Watertown. I would respectfully request that we waive the fees for the, the 2021 because as has been said, the prospects don't look good. And I would rather see a possibility of these people remaining and be, being viable and employing local people in these businesses if in any way possible that we can help them. I know there are some grants available but it's still, in talking to many of these business owners, it's a struggle. So I would respectfully request consideration of waiving the fees for one year. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Thank you, Mr. Sedaris. Um, would someone else like to make a comment? Mr. Picciarelli? Picciarelli, I always pronounce that wrong. I apologize. Um, actually, uh, Councillor Bays had her hand up First, oh, well, then let me go. Donato had his hand up second, so I'll speak third after the two of them. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bays. Gentlemen. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Picciarelli. <laughs> um, I just wanted to echo what the fellow councillors said. I have a feeling I know how this vote would go if it was on town council. Um, <laughs> I, 
you know, earlier this evening, you were, you were saying to the um, people who were, who were asking for licenses, these are only going to be valid if the, we don't shut them down. We don't even know. I mean, we are, we, I, I don't see how we can ask them to pay for a license that they might not be even be able to use. And I just feel very strongly that it's, it's one small thing we can do. And I mean, I know, I don't know how other people felt, but when I heard about the Lextown Diner and how they're suffering and what they're going through, I mean, that's the Lextown Diner. I can't even imagine some of our newer restaurants, some of our smaller restaurants that, you know, what they're going through. And I think that this is just one way we can show that we care about them and that we know they're struggling and that we will give them relief. So please consider waiving the license fee. Thank you. Mr. Donato. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the licensing uh, board. Uh, not to you know, repeat everything that was previously stated, but I did want to point out that, you know, the restaurant and hospitality industry in town is one of the first uh, segments of town that uh, community groups go to uh, when they're, you know, conducting fundraisers or, or looking for donations. And that group always steps up and always has supported different community groups uh, throughout the years in town. So I think it's only fitting that uh, during the, those groups' time of need uh, that the town supports them in return. And I would also uh, respectfully request that this board waive the renewal. Thank you. Mr. Picciarilli. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too um, would respectfully ask the board uh, to consider waiving the liquor license fees for the upcoming year. Um, yes, I, and, and uh, not only am I the district seat councilor and the town council vice president, but I'm also the chair of the budget and um, the oversight committee. And, uh, you, know, you know, one of the things that I think we need to understand is, yes, it's a potential of, say, $150,000 loss in fees, but we have a half a million dollars of expected revenue from meals tax. Um, and and the, 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 the really the blunt reality is that if these local restaurants go out of business, they will not be selling anything and we will not be getting meals tax. So that, I think that's a really important thing to consider sort of in the long term. And I think um, because the restaurant industry uh, has been hit sort of the hardest, particularly in Watertown compared to other businesses, uh, this is something that is actually within our control to do to serve you know, what are primarily local businesses that employ local people. So I, I, I would strongly urge you to consider waiving the fees for 2021. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, you do not have a name, sir, so I don't know. You, ah, Mr. Arasian. How are you? My name Hi. is Bob Arasian. Oh, okay. Um, I am the, uh, the co-president of the Watertown Business Coalition. I had uh, some prepared remarks, but I'm not gonna go through them all at this point because there's been a lot that has already been said. Um, but I would just say that we certainly appreciate the, the consideration. I think one good thing that's come out of this pandemic is that we've uh, understood the, the power of collaboration and, and um, you know, the public-private um, uh, you know, partnerships and, and agreements that, that go on. So we certainly appreciate uh, all the support we're getting tonight. And we certainly um, would love to see the waiver of fees for, for the 2021 uh, license renewals. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Mr. Orifice. Madam Chair, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Doug Orifice. I'm the other co-president of the Watertown Business Coalition. Um, thank you guys for all the hard work that you do. And Town Council, thank you so much for uh, coming out tonight and helping out. Um, it's kind of fitting. Bob and I came up with this idea of having the Watertown Business Coalition at Donahue's local restaurant. Um, we might have come up with it anyways, but it was fitting that some of the discussions that we've had over time have been in these local establishments. Um, when we started this Watertown Business Coalition, this was originally just going to be a networking group for businesses to get together, share ideas, um, get to know one another better. And um, when COVID hit, obviously that went away and we weren't able to get together live anyways. We do virtual networking. 
Um, and we pivoted right into advocacy. We didn't have plans to, but that's what this community needed. Um, and we've been lucky enough to have really intimate conversations with um, our friends in the restaurant community, hearing how they're hurting and everything. Um, some down 50%, some down 80%, and it's, it's, it's incredible what they're all going through. So um, I, I'm not gonna go through everything that everybody very eloquently went through. Thank you very much for your comments, um, Town Council and Bob. Um, I just echo the waiver for the one year and anything we can do as a show of support would be amazing. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other public comments? Are there any comments? Um, one of the one of the concerns I have is that we try to consider at least all types of businesses, uh, not just those. Uh, and, and all of the comments tonight have been um, primarily for restaurants, which would be the common victual licenses and the um, all alcohol and wine and, well, all alcohol licenses, not even the package stores, in fact. So I am going to ask uh, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman for your thoughts on <coughs> Waiving fees, reducing fees, singling out a particular class of licenses for relief and or um, considering uh, only those that are coming up for renewal now and visiting the others later. Um, what are your thoughts on all of this? Well, I agree that the, what all the speakers just said about um, waiving the licenses, but I would do it for all of them that are before us, not just for the um, alcohol licenses and the common victual licenses, but for all of them that are before us now. And as far as the ones that are coming up later, I think we can deal with them at that time. Okay. Unless, unless it makes sense to just talk about those right now and include them. I don't know, but I think we what, what's in front of us for now, the ones that need to be renewed now, I think all of them should be waived, not just one class of them, but all of them. Okay, Mr. Labadini. Yeah, um, I am, thank you everybody for your comments and uh, a lot of people know I uh, have some experience in the restaurant business. I, in my past, uh, I think we, we owe it to the community, we owe it to the restaurants, we owe it to the dishwashers to give every restaurant the opportunity to succeed. Um, so I'm, I would say I'm in favor of, of waiving anything and everything. Uh, I make it a point not to, the feedback I've got, just little comments I've heard, I make it a point not to count other people's money. So if we start going down the line of, well, that place is a chain, so they have a lot of money. I, I don't think it's in our. I don't think it's my job to decide who makes what and and whose labor cost is what, and you know who has big money behind them and who doesn't. Um, I think it's in the best interest of our taxpaying citizens. Uh, I think it's in the best interest of the town, and it's certainly in the best interest of the restaurants. And uh, I would hate to see somebody lose their job. And everything we can do to help these people, we should. So. That's where I come down on this, on, on waiving them. Okay. Um, just one slight clarification there. Um, we don't have a list of, uh, as you know from the chart you got, there, there's no list of franchise operations versus other operations in our licensing uh, segments. It's all or nothing, in other words. We would not single out particular types of operation, but only particular types of licenses. Um, Ms. Casello, I just want to be, sh I'm sorry, Mr. Lavadini, did you? Uh, yeah, my comment was, uh, maybe I didn't say it uh, with clarity. 
when when you said you know your uh, I thought your your question was what are your thoughts on you know relief in different different levels different licenses or what have you and I had heard earlier about some places where they they did one thing for you know some were half some were all uh, we've got two different you know we've got a menu of price uh, yeah. I was I was more trying to uh, answer to what you started with but well the types of licenses um, are there's really the, the only distinctions in the liquor license category is those that we can't change because they are set were set by the town as a part of its legislation that extended or expanded the number of licenses in town um, the others they're all of the same type and we can certainly um, speak to them all as a type not as an operational type but as a license type uh, Ms. Casello, uh, in relation to what Ms. Kasabian Hoffman said, um, it was the auto repair licenses and the liquor licenses that are due now. Is that correct? Auto dealer, not auto repair. Auto dealer, I'm sorry. Yes. Auto dealer licenses, class one and class two, and then all of the liquor licenses, the in holder license, and the general on premises license. Is that correct? Correct, and um, I believe that Hackney Livery Limousine and Shuttle Jitney come due in uh, May yes. or April, April and May, I believe. Yeah, but we do have 24 hour opening right now as a renewal. Okay. And um, sale of food. Which and and Madam Chair, I, I believe if it wasn't referenced also the common victualler licenses not serving alcohol. They're also due now. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So really, if we wanted to um, consider the ones that are, let's say, coming due within the next three or four months. We're only talking about a very small number that would be coming due just before summer. And given the current state of COVID-19, it's unlikely that conditions are going to change very much in the first six months of 2021. That's sort of my own reading of it. Um, and since we have so many town council members here, I can ask you that question, this question, so that I don't feel as if I'm hobbling the town. Uh, yes, we do get meal taxes from restaurants, but we also have a budget. Um, the total amount of renewal fees, 193000 that's sort of a drop in the bucket, isn't it? I hope for uh, town revenue. Um, if one of you, I mean, we're talking about a multi-million dollar operating budget for the town. Is that correct? I see some nods. Okay, good. So that would be my only hesitation about voting right now, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman, on all of the renewals. But of course, the bulk of the revenue for the renewals happens to be the liquor and the common victual and all those that are due now. So, um, and I actually missed one on that spreadsheet for BYOB that we do have one. Oh, we do. We do. So the total would be um, one ninety three six hundred okay. instead of one hundred. Okay. Just to correct that. And um, okay. can I just can um, just give the total of what would be due? What what is due? Look now. And it, it's. The total new now, let's see. 136,000, right? Well, that's for the alcohol. It would be, let's see. That one. I think it's like the one in thing. holders. General on premise. The common victualler. Yeah, so it's most of it. General on premise. The auto repair. No auto dealer. I'm sorry, auto dealer. Okay, so I'll have to subtract. Well, my point was it's most of it. Correct. Yeah, right. Correct. 
amusement device, entertainment. Yes, it's, Talks. I mean, we're talking about maybe it's most of it, maybe a thousand <laughs> that um, isn't right. affected within the next three or four months. So um, I would propose that given the impact of COVID-19 on all operations that are under license within the town of Watertown, that we waive the renewal fees for those operations for one year or for the year 2021, I should say, because um, just to be very clear. Uh, Mr. Dineski, is there anything else we would need to add to that motion to make sure it's as clear as possible? It was your motion, Madam Chair, for all the licenses regardless all licenses. of time? And then, then I think you can make it as simple as you have stated it. Anything that was renewing for 2021 right. or which comes due for renewal in 2021, I think that captures the scope. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kasabian Hoffman? I would agree. Mr. Labadini? I would agree as well. Okay. The license fees will be waived. Julie, I know we've made a headache in your procedures or we've cleaned them up a lot and made it a lot easier. Who knows? Um, are there, there may be additional fees that these operations owe as a result of Commonwealth fees that are due and if obviously this wouldn't affect any of that if someone's got to pay a fee in order to uh, get a Cori check or get their tip certification or whatever it is, um, this action will certainly not uh, absent that type of fee from being imposed upon them. So um, I believe that closes the matter of license renewals for 2021. Madam Chair, uh, if I may, and I, I apologize, also, I, just, I just, I didn't catch, did, did we have the concurring vote of the other members on the record? Yes, we okay. had Ms. Kasabian Hoffman and Mr. Labadini. One of the things we do need to do, however, is um, the renewal itself is contingent upon all of the requirements for renewal other than paying the fees. In other words, um, if you're an auto dealer and you have to provide certain records to us and certain logs in order to be renewed, or if you have to make arrangements with the town to pay off your taxes or your disposal fees, um, all of that has to still be done. In other words, we need the renewals, we need the paper, <laughs> or the electronic forms. We just don't need the fee to process it. Okay. Um, this is the last item I have on the agenda and that is comments by Ms. Casello. Do you have any comments or information we need? The only comment I have is obviously we'll be waiving the specials, correct? No. That's not a vote that we took. We actually absented those. We spoke only of the annual licenses. Okay, so town council for the other ones. Oh, you mean the, the legislative, the extended yeah. one? Well, that, that automatically becomes zero. It's a multiple of what we charge. If town council would feel that just to make it very clear, they want to take a vote to waive those they can but basically since they're multiples of what we charge the amount owed right now is zero for Perfect. 2021 thank you for the clarification okay anything else julie no. okay sergeant grady does the police department have anything that we should be aware of no, nothing further okay thank you um this hearing is adjourned Thank you all. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. Good night.